What's up everyone? Welcome to part two of me trying to win a tournament with every single race. We won in the first match 2-1 against Baby Marine, winning with Protoss and Terran losing with Zerg. Now we're going to be playing against Gerald, a 6.3k player. This is going to be a sick challenge. Let's do it. The first game is on El Saini and I decided to play Zerg here. Now just to remind you of the rules is that I just have to play every race once per best of three. Obviously, if I win or lose to Zero, I can only play two races, right? But I have to play each one once. I'm not allowed to pick Zerg or Terran or Protoss multiple times. Now, I have actually beaten Gerald a lot with my Zerg in the past. The problem is that it was mostly with the same build order uh, and even on this map as well. And I don't really think I can get away with doing it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to add some mind games into the flavor. Gerald, to be honest, he is quite significantly better than both my Zerg and my Protoss. With Terran, I have a pretty good win rate against him, but with the other race, it's quite hard. With Zerg, my win rate against him is actually pretty good, but it shouldn't be. That's, that's the only way I can really describe it, right? It shouldn't be, but it is so far. Uh, but that is obviously not going to keep up forever. Um, so what I think, well, my normal strategy, I should explain it first. Most of you will probably already see it coming if you've seen Mark games before. Oh, that was actually the wrong drone. Uh, but my normal strategy that I've had success against him with is indeed the link drop into Hydra build that I do almost every freaking ZVP. Um, here, if he's going to chase this, I'll just build it here instead. It's not really that big of a deal to me. Uh, should be okay. Looks like his probe is actually leaving, so I'll just build the hatchery there instead. Um, I think he should be able to block me if he wants to. Exactly, he's going to be able to block me and then I'll just take this base instead and that is going to be fine. I uh, don't really want to ruin my build too much by trying to put another drone and attack that or whatever. But normally what I do is I like to play 17-17 and then take that base, go for the double link drop and then into Hydras. So what I can maybe do is... Let's say go for a single link drop or no link drops at all. And then maybe go for Mutas or still go for Hydras. Kind of just try to force an overreaction of some sorts, right? More than anything else. He sees the second Overlord leaving my base already. Uh, I think we can make him a little bit nervous. Right now, I want to say that he thinks it's going to be the same build already. He's not going to be crazy enough to completely ruin his build for it. Surely not. Uh, but he's going to be very suspicious already and a little scared. So maybe we can mind game him. Now, I have to say, I don't really have a lot of experience, uh, you know, playing not a link drop from this pretty much. So this is definitely going to be a little scary. Now, he didn't make a unit too early. I'm going to fly this Overlord away. He could totally make... Actually, I have a cool idea. Um, I could go for a single link drop into the natural instead. Uh, normally what I do is I put two overlords here. I drop everything into the main and there's that. But now I could maybe do it this way. My queen is supposed to stay in the main base. Don't have to be uh, too crazy with that. I'm allowed to make one. Actually, I can make five more drones. Normally I have 16 links. Now I only need a couple, right? So I can make a couple more. Oh, this is actually quite nice. I think we're barely still not going to be able to kill that. I think I can make those links more. And that is going to be it gonna try to oh i do need to hide this overlord from whatever unit's gonna come out next of course guess i'll start a couple links already there we go gonna go up to 10 in total that's gonna leave two to stick around in the front here oh, actually there's two adepts already that's kind of surprising didn't think it was gonna be that fast i might have to make a couple more links now just because his adepts are out on the map i would imagine he's not still gonna come to my base with those but i guess you never know link speed's gonna finish now oh, wait he actually that is pretty crazy baby guys he didn't let those finish and now he's gonna have to use a recall already one of those adepts almost died but it didn't so that is quite nice for him now I'm going to morph this Overlord immediately. And I think... Oh, I don't know if I should still go for the Hydra then, honestly. Because it is a little bit predictable at this point. Having done it multiple times. I'm going to go for my extra base. Let's see. Oh, I can... I can't believe he's... He's playing like, like nothing has happened, actually. It kind of looks like he completely forgot this build existed or something more than anything else right like he looks like he just wanted to take that third base i there could be like a voyager into the main or something let's see i'm gonna kill a couple probes here already that is a really good start now that is an adept that i can kill uh maybe i should just focus on this adept let's see i'm not sure if this is like an oracle where he's going for glaives behind this or whatever i'm gonna kill that one as well and okay he actually did go for the void ray uh so maybe i should still go for the higher than he did go for the void ray i'm gonna kill a couple more probes here hopefully that one and that is actually gonna be quite good for me uh i am gonna lose that one for now i think a spore on each base would make a lot of sense and maybe a couple of 
uh, extra queens as well. But so far, I would say the mind games worked 100%. Whether I have the skills to win from here, that is another question entirely, right? Because <laughs> my opponent is a 6-3k freaking Protoss after all. Oh, I'm going to be able to snipe this probe as well, I think. Man, this has been a fantastic start for us so far, guys. Really, really good. I think we killed two Adepts as well, which is really nice. Now he does, okay, he did actually go for the Oracle. I'm happy to see that because if he didn't, uh, I would have felt like it was a bit of a shame um, that I made those spore crawlers, but he did actually go for that. So that is quite nice. So he is gonna find this base, of course. Most likely the Oracle is gonna come over here, I wanna guess. Uh, he hasn't seen my um, Hydra then yet, so that's nice. I think I would like to go for like 55 drones, five gas kind of thing. Let's see if I can do any damage to this. That'd be nice. Exactly, we're gonna hit this. Uh, Oracle pretty strongly as well. And this has all been uh, very, very nice. I do need a couple of queens over here because otherwise I might exactly. That's kind of funny that he is, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm making a building to dodge the prismatic alignment, alignmented void ray. I don't know how to say that. I mean, it sounds kind of weird, obviously, but one queen should be enough to stop that. So I'm going to go. Actually, I made more than 55 drones. I went up to. I guess 59 after the tax of making buildings, which is really not bad. Gonna rally these over here. And then I'll start making extra upgrades on this as well. Now, what do I do from here? It is not super straightforward, actually. Uh, okay, just have a couple... Of, ah, no, he went for a glaive all in after. That sucks so much. Yeah, I don't think... We, ah, that is really unfortunate, guys. I think we were in a great spot, but he decided to go for a glaive all in. And we can't stop this. I mean, I would love to make this more exciting than it is. I really wish I could, but I can't. Glaives is a 100% blind counter to the Hydras. And that is just going to be it. Yeah, I mean... I'm really sorry about this, guys. I really wanted to make it more exciting than I could, but he went for the biggest blind counter ever. One Void Ray, one Oracle into Glaives. If I did anything else, I think we win this game. And I'm not exaggerating. Our build worked 100% perfectly. So even though this is a bit of an anticlimactic loss, we can actually be quite happy with this because, like, honestly, if we destroyed it with this opener, we got ourselves into such a good spot against a 6.3k player by doing the mind game version. That's really, really nice. I think the Hydras... I would say that it's maybe a bit too greedy, but I'm not sure. Because if he doesn't play Glaives, if he's just going to go normal Blink, we are actually in a freaking fantastic spot. And I kind of need to cut corners against a better Protoss player like that. Kind of a shame for a game on to end like that. Let's go for game number two. Map number two is Crimson Court, and I'm going to be playing Protoss for this one. Now... I am a little nervous because the build I'm going to do is the build I've been talking about a lot. It's the weird triple gate opener that I invented in my no warp gate to grid master series. The reason why I'm nervous for this is because I was spreading to war the word to like every pro player in the whole story cup because I was trying to get them to play my build as well, which means that Gerald is obviously going to be aware of my build. Now, I have had it happen in the past that he maybe kind of like underestimates the build or something like that so it could work out very well still but it's obviously going to be a very hard one like this is going to be a long shot if we survive the game number three and i get to play terran i think we're going to be slightly favored it's going to be a hard match so it might be slightly favored but this game is going to be a really hard one to win so ideally what i would have happened here is that he sees my gateway right away and then goes to proxy me this build to me has proven to be the hardest uh, proxy robo counter there is because I'm gonna have three gateways really fast which means I'll have three stalkers instead of two right so what happens very often is they'll come over here they see that I'm uh, making a gateway on the low ground they'll move away to proxy a pylon but then I actually add two more gateways and I have just an absurd amount of stalkers and I can kill the pylon and from then on uh, it is going to be relatively smooth sailing once again Keep in mind that our opponent is a 6.3k Protoss player, so it's never going to be that easy, but that is in theory how it works. So now he's going to start blocking my base, but he's going to see the gateways, of course. Here we go. That is actually a very poorly placed gateway, uh, and that might... Oh, I'm actually very sad about that. That might come back to bite us, guys. That is the worst gateway I could have placed, and that might cost us a game later. I wonder if you guys have spotted my mistake already. This gateway should have been one more back, so I can wall this off with one pylon. Right now, I can't wall this with one pylon. He was going to try to steal that i know my gerald um so i need actually i can't even wall this off i yeah that's actually that's actually a horrible mistake like really i, I can't underestimate how bad of a mistake that is i think we still um, have a chance of course i could go for three adepts maybe i can use it as a bait 
we can always use our weakness a as a strength instead. Now, let's see what I can find for my opponent. He does have a regular gateway building. I think we could go for the triple adept play um, and see how it goes. I kind of want to make a pylon here already just to kind of see what he is going to be building here. I'm going to start warp gate as well. Um, I feel like this pylon should tell us whatever units are going to come out of his um, yeah, out of his gateways, right? Now, I could go for either Stalkers here or more Adepts. I'm not quite sure which version I like more. Uh, if he would... Okay, so he's going to go for Stalkers. Uh, then I think I will make Stalkers as well. I'm going to make one round of Stalkers. And, and then... Wait, should I Chrono Boost them actually? I'm not quite sure. I guess I'll Chrono Boost one of them. I'm going to get Supply Blocked here, but that's all planned with the build order. Now, I'm just not quite sure if we're going to be playing against, let's say, an Oracle or something like that. I'm going to try to shade into the main base with three Adepts right away. Uh, that is one of the main parts of the build. Looks like by his unit choice that he has enough to block this. I'm going to have to be quite careful. I guess I'll just take care of this uh, probe right away. Don't really uh, want this to waste much more of my time. I didn't actually see a Nexus there. Oh, that is scary. I didn't see a Nexus, so this could be an Oracle. I'm going to make a battery. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be on time, honestly, but that's what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to take the Nexus right away. Uh, if this is going to be an Oracle, we could be in trouble. I kind of think it might be, to be honest, but I suppose we'll see. Like, I really want to make something happen, of course. I'm going to make one more pylon here, and then I guess I'll try to get a sentry out. Uh, oh, there's actually a pylon there. Oh, that is quite annoying. Um, do I need to worry about it? I'm not quite sure, actually. Kind of depends on when my my warpings are gonna come out let's see i guess i'll shade these into uh, over there these are gonna do a significant amount of damage oh these adepts i can actually finish them as well which is a little crazy but i guess this is gonna be a uh, pretty good after all my stalker stopped chasing which is quite bad really uh, let's see how many more pros i can get looks like he went for a twilight actually okay so we are gonna play against a twilight all in it seems like why the hell are you guys there oh my god <laughs> that was really not intentional there. So we are going to be playing against a Twilight All-In. I hope it's not DT. So we're actually... I guess it's not an All-In. Well, I killed a lot of workers. That's why I'm tempted to say he's going to go for an All-In. But it doesn't necessarily have to be. I should probably still get a Twilight out. It sucks that my Stalkers didn't chase his Stalkers here. Because then I would have been able to probably kill at least one of those. Which would have been very nice. Okay, let's see. I'm going to be out here. Let's see if I can kill one Stalker already. That is quite nice. Okay, we're gonna get another one, I believe. Yeah, we are gonna kill another one. Okay, this is very nice so far, guys. Definitely very nice. At this point, he should be getting Blink out, I believe. I'm not quite sure how fast Blink is, so uh, might have to be a little careful here. I just hope we're not gonna go up against DTs because DTs are gonna be uh, freaking dangerous. I'm actually gonna make two Adepts and try to shade them into the natural. I do want to keep the pressure up a little bit. Um, let's see, I guess... Okay, now, now he does have Blink, exactly. That's what I was expecting. Okay... I'm going to be able to target one of those down. If I can, that'd be massive. No, we're not going to get it. Oh, that is super, super painful. I guess we'll just kill it really fast with those. Uh, and then we should be completely fine. Two Stalkers are going to be able to chase that down. There's already a battery in, in the main base, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Oh, I do need to make sure it doesn't kill my probes over here as well, of course. I left one Stalker out there on accident. That is a little painful. It's also not the worst thing ever, of course. Let's see if I can get one Stalker. Barely not. Oh, that would have been so nice if I could have killed that. Now, I'm going to make use of the opportunity to shade a couple of adepts through. Hopefully, those can actually reach their end point. If they get caught by the... Ah, that is unfortunate. I guess he probably... Either he was lucky or he just saw the shade at some point. I'm not quite sure. It doesn't really matter for me anyway. Now, I'm going to put some pressure out on the map. Let's see if I can kill something. Oh, might be able to kill a couple here. I'm going to go... Or damage a couple. Two of those are like one HP, I believe. Okay, let's see. Actually, a good amount of damage on those stalkers, though. I know he killed one, but I definitely did a good amount of damage there. I'm a little worried about DTs. I'm not quite sure if I have the freedom to worry about DTs, though. Uh, I guess I'll send a hallucinated scout, see if it can find anything. Uh, if it does, I can always wall this off. Like, I can just stand there with a stalker, and that's going to be pretty fine. Uh, I guess maybe I should just walk stalkers over here anyway, just in case it is going to be DTs. See, I'll just pop down a force field immediately. I'll start chrono boosting the blink. There is indeed a DT shrine. Okay. That's really nice that I scouted that. Um, I guess I will... I'm not quite sure... Uh, wait, this is actually quite nice for me, guys. Blink is about to finish, I believe. Exactly. There we go. Okay. Going to be able to do a little bit of damage there. Uh, I do need to wait... 
Let's see. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna heal it forever, pretty much. I'm gonna have to overcharge this. There we go. Okay, here we go. I can probably blink forward again. Oh, this is gonna be a nice blink forward as well. Let's see how many I can kill. Okay. There we go. That's gonna die as well. I do need to remove that at some point. Here we go. Let's blink it back. Oh, my guys are dying over here. Um, okay, let's get a force field over here. Just to try to run things around. Yeah, D DTs. You guys will know me. DT, one of my absolute least favorite units in RTS because this is just such a stupid way to lose, you know? Like not having the tech. Oh, no, oh, it wasn't a wall. I mean, thank goodness the observer is going to finish at a decent time. Um, I, don't, I don't know where my... What path did my units take? What on earth is that? Seriously, what path did my units actually take to go all the way freaking around? Oh my goodness, I'm messing this up a little bit, aren't I? Okay, let's see if I can do some damage. That DT is going to die as well. Guess we'll just blink these back. Try to kill one more unit if I can. Looks like I might not be able to. I, I killed this DT, right? Wait, it's, uh, I think we're just going to call it here. GG is going to have to be called. Oh, man. Even after all that... Okay, he did macro a little poorly. But even after all that, we're only 10 supply down. Let's see. I'm not quite sure. Wow. Guys, our build worked again. Wow, this is so freaking cool. Our 3 gate well... I, I guess you could say that it worked, right? Yeah, third... Well, he did make the DT Shrine. Let's keep this in mind. Let's keep the investment of the DT Shrine in mind. But we have a third base faster, and we're up by six workers. Oh, man, I'm so happy. Like, this is one of the most anticlimactic, disappointing series ever. It really was. The first game we lost because of the blind counter Glaives all in. This game we lost because of DTs, and my detection was too late. But both our builds actually freaking work. That is so cool. The mind game link drop thing worked. And my 3k opener actually got us ahead against a 60 Protoss. Now, this is... A, I'm still... I'm very disappointed in this game. The way these games worked. I feel like they don't make StarCraft look like a fantastic game. That you can just die like that. I'll just, just straight up. You know, not my favorite StarCraft games ever. But I am so proud that my builds are actually that awesome. Now, we are going to be in the final match. Let's win that one. The final series of the group stage is going to be against Fiant, a roughly 5.8k Zerg player. Now, Zerg is, I believe, the worst matchup for my random, it or well, for, I guess, random meaning all my races in total. I think my TVZ is actually pretty good. My PVZ is, I think it used to be good before I stopped practicing, and my ZVZ was never that great, so I guess we'll see. Now, because I'm a little bit shaken up by the last series, like, you could... Yeah, you guys could probably tell a little bit in the, in the way I sounded towards the end of the game. I feel like I really lost in an annoying way. And that kind of ruined my mood a little bit. So I think the best thing I can do for myself is to play something that's a little bit weird and a little bit fun. So instead of going for the best possible win rate strategy, I think I just want to do something I've never done before just to keep it fresh and keep myself entertained and lift my spirits a little bit. So what I want to do is actually going to be... Uh, you guys, if you watch No Warp Gate to Green Master, you will know this build order. I want to play... Uh, it was a bit of a meme, actually, when I said it. I, I played this build against Protoss, right? I said, I'm going to go 2-gate Blink Robo, but without the Blink Robo. And what I meant by that is just make Stalkers without Blink and without Robo take a super fast third. And I was wondering if I could do that against Zerg, but with Adepts. So I basically want to go... Oracle and two Adepts, but without the Oracle. <laughs> and see if I can take like a really fast third and then somehow get myself in a decent spot for the macro game later. Um, the way I want to do this is I suppose I'll be doing it kind of similar with my gas as it comes to the no warp gate challenge. So I'm going to put 16 on minerals instead of the usual 15. Take a faster base, faster core. And I probably do need um, a second gateway at some point. Now, this map is a little bit awkward to wall. So, let me just check real quick if I can actually wall this off properly. It seems like this should be fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and scout with this pro. Now, I might not even need, thinking about it, I might actually not even need a second gateway. I think I might very well just be able to chrono boost uh, this one gateway. But then a one gate expand does sound a little crazy if you don't have the stargate for oracles. But I guess that's, the, you know, that's kind of what I'm here for, right? To play like a bit of a baboon. And let's see if we can find anything sus from our opponent's side here. I was even considering going for the Stargate after the third base to still get the Oracles. Because the Oracles have such uh, a nice amount of... I, I feel like it just keeps you safe very nicely, you know? Like against Zergling run bys and whatever, it always feels very nice. So I think I'm going to do it like this. He saw I was making Warp Gate right away. Which could actually mind game him to think... Um, that I'm going for a Twilight Council because if 
you wouldn't make warp gate right away how, huh how would that go down oh my that was actually mind-blowing like i i didn't mean to block it anyway because my probe was gonna die to the zerglings but i mean this my probe i feel like was very clearly in the square there for me so i'm not quite sure what happened but it's all right so i'm gonna go for three adepts and then i'll pop down the nexus already and i'm gonna send this one across as well I'm gonna scout the drone count with this one let's see what i can find probably nothing too special it uh, has a decent amount of workers and now i'm gonna take this base already and i'm actually gonna follow it up by going for the stargate this is like a, such a backwards way to do things but i mean if it's gonna work that's gonna make me very very happy so stargate's gonna be over here and this is probably going to be actually i can go here i think that's a very poor adept pathing by me actually yeah that is gonna cost me a little bit for sure now I just need to make sure that I can actually get this adept out. If I lose this one as well, we're going to be in trouble. Otherwise, we are going to be fine. And we're most likely going to be fine. He could technically send his, uh, his zerglings across the map real fast. And then I think we might be in a little bit of trouble. I'm going to go for a Twilight Council after, actually. I feel like that would be quite nice. Um, yeah, it looks a little problematic here, actually. Uh, can I deal with this properly? I'm not 100% convinced. So my adept is going to be home already. That pylon is going to finish relatively soon. And I'm going to make an oracle. This must look so funny to my Zerg opponent. Like, this looks extremely backwards from what you're supposed to do. Third base into the oracle. I, I feel like I could have done this build so much more efficient if I just walled with the pylon, which is admittedly a little risky, but it would have been quite cool. Now, what do I go for here, guys? Do I go for blink or charge? I kind of want to go for blink. Not, not for a particular reason. I just kind of feel like it, to be honest. I'm going to make a void ray after that. Uh, and then I'll just see uh, what I can see with this oracle. Hopefully, I can get like a little bit of extra information that I wouldn't otherwise expect. Um, I don't know, maybe like a roach attack or something. Now, this is really the first time I've ever done this build. So I have no idea what I actually have money for and what i don't have money for so that is you know the tricky part about all of this i guess we're gonna see so him right now it looks like i'm just gonna do like a gateway all in i think uh let's see maybe i should it looks like he's making a lair there um i kind of want oh, <laughs> to keep this in the corner and then go for a recall i believe there we go i'll just get that recall i feel like i should be going for a fourth base here I'm going to start up my gas uh, and then I'll get a robo as well. This one got one kill, which is quite nice. Oh, actually, I feel like I use revelation so little. I didn't even realize what it was going to look like on the minimap. It felt so weird that I could actually see what the hell was going on there, but quite cool at the same time. I'm going to take the Nexus over here already. Let's see if I can use this little squad to kill some stuff. There we go. Now, I'm definitely being extremely greedy here, guys. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is probably not something you want to be blind copying because this is a little bit insane. I'm actually going to put down a, a stasis over here. I feel like that is a nice idea. Maybe warp a couple more stalkers before I truly get into the storm. I want to make immortals and storm pretty much. That's what I want to build. I also have... This is such a random army, by the way. It's actually pretty funny. Like, it looks like he, he's kind of caught off guard a little bit. Like, he doesn't know how many units he needs to commit to this. Uh, and I, it completely makes sense because it, I'm actually killing a lot of freaking Zerglings with that, aren't I? Like, this looks pretty nice. Oh, it does look like we're being attacked now, uh, which makes a lot of sense. But I'm not quite sure if we're going to be able to defend it, sadly. Guess I'll just uh, click these over here. Maybe I'll warp a couple Zealots as well. He does have a Queen Drop going for himself as well. I'm actually going to put a Stasis down there. I do kill the Overlord, which is super nice. Now, let's see. This one is definitely going to die at some point. So, we're going to have to see how that's going to go. Uh, I can heal that battery up as well. He does have another Overlord with even more freaking links and stuff. So, that is a little bit annoying. So far, I mean, this hold has actually been kind of spectacular, to be honest. Because I still have all my Stalkers. I actually got the Immortal out very surprisingly. And keep in mind, I'm taking a freaking third base behind this, right? Like, this is not, you know, your average freaking three base macro game kind of thing. Let me blink those back for a little bit as well i'm gonna think i'm gonna warp a couple zealots in here i feel like zealots would be quite nice okay they're gonna fight quite well against those as well ideally i repowered that one i think i want to blink towards the bottom here i feel like those are doing so well but i'm about to lose my robo and i think we might still uh, end up being broken here i'm gonna warp a couple more stalkers if i can he did get actually, I didn't even see that bio on the Immortal, but it kind of hurt. There we go. I'm going to blink that one back as well. Really need the freaking probes to start showing up here. I'm about to have another battery. 
Let's make sure I don't uh, walk into that freaking corrosive vials because that would hurt like crazy. Let's see, if I can micro this one back, that'd be super nice. I got a couple more warpins coming over here. I can't put... Wait, are the queens still alive on top? They are actually still alive, surprisingly. Let's get a couple more units out here. That... Uh, what was it the immortal stayed alive for so freaking long but i think in the end we are still going to be beaten here i'm kind of surprised it seems like he wants to right click um the nexus but i have another one over here so i'm not even sure i would mind it that much to be honest i'm gonna warp a couple more stalkers i'm still rallying probes like crazy but i mean you have to do something right here we go let's just blink those out of the way like that and wait, we, we could even potentially keep this one alive over here. It kind of looks like we might. Here we go. I'm going to go for that. Uh, he wants to load in the queens, and I do not want that to happen, of course. So here, let's try to micro these back step by step if I can. Going to blink on top. Oh, he's actually still making units? Why did he show up with these so freaking late? And now we're going to have a battery again. And that means we are going to be able to survive this attack eventually. Make, I can even heal that with the other shield battery. Look at that. I'm freaking healing it with the other shield battery. So it's staying alive so freaking long. Now, I don't really have uh, a lot of units left here, but neither does he. I guess I'll just uh, keep warping in zealots into his face as well. Let's see. I feel like the zealots are going to be quite useful against all the zerglings and stuff. I think he might have just biled a bunch of his own Zerglings as well, which would be uh, quite nice for me. Looks like he's going for the Pylon right now. Do I actually have units here? It's, it's very hard to tell, honestly. I think I'm going to go for the Blink forward now. He's uh, kind of looked like he was biling his own Roach there more than anything else, to be honest. So I'm going to be able to kill those Roaches. That was a very bad Blink by me, actually. Dude, he keeps showing up with, like, more stuff when it's just not what I'm expecting anymore. But I think now with that amount of Roaches, he probably has finally broken us. And that is going to be a GG. going to have to be called. He only had 51 workers. And honestly... Okay, I, man, this freaking video is so weird. All three games so far, I think we really did amazingly. Now, this game for me was definitely not as disappointing as the other games because this doesn't feel like a lame way to lose. He just did a good timing attack against the Gritty Protoss and that was pretty much it. But I went for four gates only, very fast third, very fast fourth, and I almost held a 50 drone all in. Even now, the economy is almost the same. Like, this is freaking crazy to me. I feel like I have maybe not the craziest or not the best strategy. They're definitely the craziest. Not the best strategies ever, but we're coming so close to winning in these impossible situations. So either the answer is I'm very stupid and my builds suck, or I'm kind of the goat, but my builds still suck. Anyway, let's try to survive in the next game. Game number two of this best of three is going to be on side Delta, and I'm going to be playing Terran. Now, the worrying part about losing with Protoss against Fiant is that I'm going to have to win the ZBZ, and I don't know how I'm going to do that, all right? And that's, of course, we still have to win a Terran game. You could beat our Terran as well. But our Terran is definitely favored, but my Zerg, I, yeah, that's going to be an extremely scary match. Though I did pick a pretty good map for it. The Zerg game would be on Ghost River, which is a small map, which is hopefully gonna allow for some cheesy stuff to be able to happen. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Now for this game, I'm gonna open with... Actually, I was gonna say two racks Reaper, but I'm kind of tempted to just make it like a... F Actually, yeah, why not? I'll just go Mass Reapers, because why the hell not, guys? I feel like it. I, I really need... I mean, the last game... It sounds kind of funny to you guys, probably. The last game was already a bit of a pick-me-up because I actually did enjoy that game a lot uh, compared to the first two games, at least, even though I lost. But I still think I want to win with something cool to really raise my spirits again. So what I'm going to do here is... Unless he goes Roaches. Actually, no, even if he goes Roaches, frick it. I'm going to go for 3 Rex Reaper. Then I'll expand, and then I'll go for more Reapers with upgrades, okay? I'm going to try to go for a 5 Rex Reaper plus 1 timing. Which sounds absolutely ridiculous, but I have won with stuff like that in the past. So hopefully uh, it can look as epic as it has before. Now, I played against Fiant in... I think it was an ESL Cup or maybe a Kung Fu Cup or something along the lines. I'm not quite sure. And I played Turex Reaper against him. Might have been like a qual... Actually, I really didn't have no idea what that was in, in fact. Uh, but I played Turex Reaper against him and he was really good against the Reaper. So... Could be a little bit of a sketchy choice by me, but that's alright. Actually, that is a... Poorly timed supply depot. That was supposed to be a barracks. So that means my third barracks will be slightly delayed, which is not the end of the world, but did already mess the build up a little bit. Actually, maybe we can just say that this is a slightly more economic version because if you delay the depot, your SEV gets supply blocked for about four seconds, I believe. So 
I, I guess it's not necessarily a mistake. I just wasn't really planning on doing it. Which means it's not all that bad in the end. Now, usually what you want to do with 3RX Reaper is you make 12 Reapers, I think it is. Unless your opponent's going to roaches, uh, gonna go roaches, and then you usually stop at like 7, because mass Reapers are not going to be as useful. You just want a couple to drop a grenade all the time, pretty much. Um, but I'm going to go for mass Reapers regardless of what we play against, so that's going to be uh, quite the challenge. I think the links are going to be up this ramp. Uh, oh no, he went for the extractor trick hatchery first, okay. Oh, this could be interesting. I, since this build is so new, I don't think I've ever had this build order matchup before. This guy's going to have his queens very fast, but he's going to have his link speed very slowly. This is actually a very interesting match. I'm going to get a creep tumor as well, I believe. There we go. That's going to be a nice pickoff. We're going to get a drone as well. I'll drop a uh, grenade over there, so his queens are going to be knocked back. Let's see. Okay, so he does have enough gas for link speed already. Uh, let's see if I can jump over here. That'd be really nice. And we're going to be able to get down here. There we go. And this is obviously a good start. Need to be careful to not get surrounded by whatever is coming out of those eggs. We are going to lose one Reaper there. Uh, but that was definitely worth it compared to what we killed. Now, we do have to be careful because i am actually not quite sure when his link speed is gonna finish i thought it was gonna be very late first but he does already have 100 gas line it's probably links up here if i had to guess exactly oh it actually did way more damage to my one reaper than i thought it would that's kind of scary i i do want to take that gas already but i don't think i can yet i'll go for the engineering bay first and then i'll add two more barracks i think that's going to be the plan yeah, so the thing is, he's going to have four queens already, and he's going to get link speed soon. So I don't think I can walk up the ramp. I think I can try it once. Let's see how it goes. There's three queens there. We're going to be able to save that one, which is super nice. Getting some nice damage done already as well. Just want to make sure I don't lose any, because Mass Reaper is a very snowball-y composition. You really don't want to lose any units for... I would say you don't want to lose units for a decent trade. If it's a good trade, then you obviously do want to, but a decent trade, so let's say you trade like with 30% efficiency or so, uh, then you don't want to do it already because with Reapers, you really just want to spam a lot of Reapers and make sure they always stay in a big ball. If you ever lose a couple, they're just going to be way less efficient. So now with this strategy, the plan is to kind of sit back until you get plus one. Um, I should be able to get a little bit of damage on here. He's actually going to jump down here. That's actually an interesting play. Shouldn't really... Oh, it gren you saw that? It grenaded my Reapers back up. What the hell did I just see? I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> okay, well, that's interesting. So that, for example, uh, is resource-wise, is a decent trade, especially considering my opponent has a pretty bad economy. But since I want a snowball, it's going to be a bad trade objectively for this builder that I'm doing. Should be able to take care of a lot of these Zerglings, by the way. Maybe even all of them. Uh, don't think it's worth it chasing the rest. I'm going to go for a command center now. And let's see. Plus one is going to finish at about 556. So we can look at the map and just kind of prepare for that. Oh, this is a really good catch, actually. We're going to get the Ravager super early. Oh, that is awesome. Maybe I can even target that last one. Probably not. So our bonus, this is this is why I wanted to go for plus one Reapers, even against Roaches. Uh, the main reason was that very often if they play Roaches, they will try to all-in you, but then you just have a million Reapers and you get plus one at some point. Like, to me, this actually looks like a really good position, but I need to make sure to keep my growing well. This is never going to be easy. Let's see, if I can get any amount of links for free, that'd be so nice. Like, this is what you don't want to do with the grenades, right? You just want to zone in forever. Uh, and that is uh, a very efficient way of dealing with this stuff, actually. Oh, he's going to try to go forward now. This is actually a pretty risky play by him because this is just a straight up a lot of Reapers. Now, let's see. I can probably take care of some of the Ravagers from the top as well. I need to make sure... Wait, if, if he wants to dive with his Zerklings, I can actually kill these Ravagers very fast. Look at this. Drop grenade so he can't surround me with those links. Move that one away to bait the links away for a little bit. Repair that even more. Let's see if I can get that Ravager. That Ravager falls as well. I do lose two Reapers for it. That's actually an, a, a perfectly even trade, by the way. One Reaper for two Ravagers is completely even in resources. The last couple of Ravagers are going to fall, and now we should be able to cruise through the victory, especially having our third base up already. Not quite sure where that camera hockey was. And now we can even go up to 10 barracks with mass reapers, uh, which is uh, obviously better than five. It's quite literally double, in fact. Now, let's see. Is there a third base being built? He's probably just spamming Zerglings, if I had to guess. There's no third base yet. Uh, and I already... Oh, my God. This is... 
why it always looks strong for some reason like almost always as i say it almost always looks freaking strong like i have a third base already i have a million freaking barracks coming up and my opponent is chilling here on freaking uh two bases only and here's the thing guys these reapers have plus one so they're actually extremely strong against the zerglings like crazy strong you guys probably thought this was going to be a close fight or a bad fight but these things just don't really die anymore against zerglings they kill them so freaking fast these links are also gonna die really fast i actually recently learned by the way completely random fact that if you keep a reaper alive in tvp until you get plus one your reapers start four shutting probes as well and i noticed because i had a game what the hell are these guys doing uh i had a game where my reaper stayed alive so long it's at some point i got plus one attack and my reaper went freaking ham on the pros when they got into the base so if you ever keep two reapers alive against protoss and you get plus one it's gonna be pretty good okay this is gonna be painful oh thank goodness it was only three i thought it could have been five all right so this is not a map where i usually want to play three rex reaper on i can tell you guys that much because that cliff is just unjumpable now these links die one hit faster from the reaper so they are gonna die very fast i think i might even he's gonna see my base and be like you serious bro what the hell is this he might even go for a counter attack actually that was a yeah okay this looks like a counter attack 100 percent i want to guess about 50 links about to enter my third base it's actually less than 50 it's more like 25 keep in mind these are still uh freaking plus one reaper so they're insanely strong there we go. He doesn't have upgrades on the links yet. I think I maybe can add a couple more command centers as well. And now maybe it is a good time to just go jump into the base. I'm going to make a factory so I can go up to additional upgrades. I think that would be quite smart. Let's see. Oh, he's going to try to go for an attack one more time. I can kill his entire army with just these Reapers, by the way. I don't even need to worry about the links around or anything else. Like, these Reapers alone will kill his entire army. They are so freaking strong. There's links in my third, but I'm going to chase him until he is absolutely done for. I can even I can actually one-shot these Ravagers. There we go. I was going to say right-click, but one-shot is a way more accurate description. And we have finally won a freaking game in this video. Thank goodness. All right. If I went 0-4, that would have been very, very tough. So now we are 1-1 in the deciders match. We're going to have to play Ghost River as a Zerg. It's going to be really, really difficult. Like, I hope at least it's not going to be as anticlimactic as losing against DTs. At least I want to lose in an honorable way. Probably not going to happen because I'm going to be the one playing like an absolute baboon. But let's do it. Here we go. I am uh, as scared as I was sounding before. Like, I, I thought maybe once I, you know, get into the game, I'm going to get into the zone. No, I'm actually pretty nervous here. I have played Fiant a couple times before in ZVZ. I think... I'm not quite sure if I've beaten him. I know that I've beaten Zerg players of his MMR for sure. I'm not quite sure if I've actually beaten him, though. Especially with how many different accounts people have and yada yada. I'm actually not quite sure. So, I don't exactly remember how to do the build. But what I want to do is I want to open on two base and go for a Roach timing. That is probably my best shot. I think if I... So, like, a standard ZVZ is, like, you go for a fast third base, you go through the Ling Bane Wars, and then you get into Roaches at the right time, and you scout for all the LNs at the right time. I I don't think I can really do that, to be honest. Like, that, you know, I feel, I feel like I, I'm missing so much knowledge to do that, like, it wouldn't even be... I don't think it would even be close. I would just be 10 drones behind without even knowing it, or I would die to an all in I've never heard of before, invented 12 years ago in a, in a mountain in Japan. Like, it's, you know... I, I don't want to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to play the game my way without being too distracted by what's going on. I just want to hit like a good timing. Hopefully I can make it work. If I don't, so be it. We did our best. Uh, probably should have won the Protoss game. I know that that really that was going to be a better shot for us. I'm still proud of that game, by the way. Like I'm actually kind of surprised that despite my scouting being so bad, I had no idea I was being all in. The fact that I almost held that in the situation we were in, I still think that's freaking insane. Like, I'm actually very, very proud of that. Now, I think I could probably skip making Zerglings as well. I know that this map is pretty good for early pools just because it's so freaking small. Um, I think he is more likely to do my build than to 12 pool, actually. I, I don't know if he's normally a 12 pooler, but uh, yeah, it's actually the same build. Exactly. So his hatchery is fast. What he's doing is he's playing hatchery first, but the safe way, pretty much. So he's not going to die to a 12 pool. Honestly, if I was him, I would have expected a 12 pool. So, you know, makes complete sense that he's doing that. So we're both on pretty much identical footing. Kind of depends on whether he made a couple of zerglings or not. I guess we'll find out soon enough. My overlords will see them pass. And my overlord's going to go over here. 
Now, I don't quite know exactly how to do this build. I found out that there was a better way to do it than the way I was doing initially, but I didn't actually copy it step to step. I think what I was doing was I, would, I was going for four queens, but I think you're supposed to just go for two queens like this. He's gonna see that my lair is building already. Uh, I think I have to make an evolution chamber right now, somewhere where it actually was. Uh, the Zergling is still alive, I believe. It is actually still alive. So he is gonna see the lair. I don't think this is gonna surprise him very much. I think he probably remembers that this is the kind of stuff that I like to play. Then what I wanna do is just get plus one attack and road speed. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Like, that's the entire game plan there. Try to hit a really nice timing attack with plus one. I didn't even make an extra queen, which I think you normally would, which means my build is probably a little greedier than it normally should be. But my overlords are in a good enough spot that I should be able to see, like, a million Zerklings come across the map and be able to wall in time. At least I think. Now, for my POV, it looks like he's doing the same thing as me. Um... So I should probably play a little more economically than I normally would, right? I think that makes sense. Like, the best way to play is theoretically the same as your opponent, but slightly greedier. Because then you're just slightly ahead, but you'll have enough units to, to stop the stuff, right? That, that, is, that is basically the idea here. Now, there's a couple Zerglings coming. Um, do I have to be scared for that? Probably not. I made a couple too many uh, drones, actually. Didn't really want to make that many drones, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to matter. I could go for a second Evo already, actually, to make sure I wall this off. Let's see. We'll go for a wall. I, oh, I barely... I was going to say I barely didn't get it in time, but I did actually get it in time. That is really nice. Now, what I want to do here is actually expand. I want to kind of, like, fake him out and go for an expansion here. I don't think I can really uh, skip out on units too much because he is going to have roaches himself, right? I think maybe now I should start start saturating everything because I ideally I start 2-1 here early. Okay, so he's going to see these. I'm going to take my gases already. I'm definitely being a little greedy here. I just want to make sure um, that I get ahead if it is a macro game pretty much. More than anything else, that's what I'm trying to do here. He's going to see a couple more roaches coming his way. I'm sure that he already has uh, a bunch of roaches himself. Let's see. For now, I see a bunch of queens. He has four queens, actually, which seems like he might have been a little scared, actually. Okay, so now there's more roaches over here. I'm going to start a couple more drones right away. Now, let's see. He's going to try to take a base. What does he have here? A couple of roaches. Not a crazy amount of roaches, but a couple. I'm going to start building some drones now. It kind of seems like he is going for an all-in here. I can actually pretty easily cancel this, I believe. There we go. There's going to be a cancel on that already. And now I'm going to be allowed to make a couple more roaches. Or maybe forced, I should say. Wait, I can maybe kill that again. Let's see if I can out my crypt. No, okay. His roaches were still there, unfortunately. It's really hard to tell for me when I'm being too greedy and when I'm not being greedy enough, you know? Now, he, okay, he does know that my hatchery is way faster. If, if I was him, I would be spamming roaches like crazy right now. Um, that would make the most sense to me for sure. So he's going to scout my base with an overseer. Um, like, theoretically, he could be going for mutas, but... I feel like I should just commit to my timing, honestly. I feel like if I just commit to my timing, that would be way smarter. I'm actually going to scout his base by attacking him. See if I can find something. Uh, let's see. Okay, so he is going to go for an attack. He has plus one attack. Uh, pretty much the or exactly the same upgrades as me. I don't know what his situation besides this is, though. He sees that I have no drones on this base, which is undoubtedly going to be a little sus for him. I think we're going to start a couple more drones here and now. At some point, I, I can make Ravagers, um, and that should help me snipe all the Overlords at least. Let's see if his Roaches are still at home. It doesn't look like his Roaches... Okay, his Roaches are at home for now. Uh, I think I'm going to... Should I make an extra gas? I think I should, because then I can morph Ravagers, right? Like, that would make a lot of sense. It sucks. I should have made a Queen earlier, by the way. Like, the Queen would have made a pretty decent difference, I think. Let's see, I'm going to make a couple of Ravagers already. And uh, that's mostly going to be to bio down the overlords, but it could also help me in, uh, you know, the fights later on with, like, really big roach counts and stuff. Okay, let me just snipe down that one. Uh, I think there's an overlord over here that I can kill instantly, right? So I just go for this. Okay, there we go. That overlord should die right away. It does indeed die. And now I'm going to have my 2-1 timing attack, which 
admittedly my opponent might also have. It's, it's a little scary what I'm doing because he could have the exact same timing. Uh, and then the defender is obviously going to have a small advantage, right? Now, let's see. Oh, he went for Mutaz, actually, interestingly enough. Uh, he doesn't have the same upgrades as me at all. Let's see. Oh, that is almost a mistake there. Wait, did I forget road speed? I didn't, right? No. Okay, so he has he went for Mutas instead of the attack. I think he might barely have enough Mutas here, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we might have just attacked a little bit too late. He was actually being a very greedy boy, and I think that's gonna work very, very well for him. He's actually gonna counter-attack with the Mutas, which is a very interesting choice. I'll go for a Hydra then, uh, and then we'll see what I can do. Um, I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if he's just gonna try to go all the way to my base. Gonna drop one corrosive bile over there. He is gonna be able to... I. That's actually really crazy to me that he's going for the full-on attack. I feel like Zergs never ever do that. But I think it's gonna be the GG move, honestly. Yeah, this, this is really, really weird to me. Like, I've never seen a Zerg do that ever. They always hunt the Overlords, but he just didn't care at all and went for the full-on attack on the workers. And I don't really have anything to stop it. So I think this is going to be it, guys. I think we have been out-greeted by the opponent. I mean, this is pretty much what I was expecting to happen. I have a couple of drones over here, which is actually quite funny. Keep in mind, I did kill a lot of workers. It's kind of it's, it's like, like, kind of like a drone pull here a little bit. Okay, move command by the opponent. That is a pretty big mistake there. I'm going to try to get in like a little closer. My Hydras are going to finish pretty soon. My Roaches are actually doing surprisingly well, I have to say. Hydras are are not going to finish in time and that is going to be a gg is going to have to be called i kind of want to see what the situation was before i attack just so i can kind of remember it for the next time and yeah exactly oh that sucks for me guys i was definitely ahead in upgrades but he just stopped droning super super early he basically did an all-in but with muta so he didn't make drones he had seven less drones than me and just made mutas to beat the roaches i think this strategy was really 100 percent tailored just to deal with my attack and that makes a lot of sense like you would imagine that a seasoned zerg player like that would know what to do and yeah i mean i feel like every single loss here kind of felt the same it felt like i maybe underestimated my own off races a little bit because every game i got myself in either a winning spot or a very winnable spot but i always felt like i had to do something necessarily or i was like a little too greedy or stuff like that right so maybe for the next time i do one of these tournaments not quite sure when or if i will but maybe for the next time i can practice my off races a little bit and get a little more confidence because i feel like i could have gone five zero in these games as well you know like i feel like every game i got myself either in a good spot or i did really good with what i have but it is what it is we are going to be eliminated but i had a great time for now i am absolutely exhausted hope you guys had a good time despite all the losses if you did give the video a like subscribe to the channel and i see y'all for the next one adios